This video is on the objective, use the sum and difference formula for sine. All right, this is number two, right, so the second video on a question related to this particular objective from your Newton Ulta homework that I'm looking at. And I'm hoping that you know you've seen the first one and you know where I went. Over, I rem I showed you what the sum and difference formula for sine were. So those are going to come back here. All right. So if you want to see some more stuff, right, click on more instruction. Look at their videos, their notes, their examples, and hopefully those help you. All right. So here. So we're given information about a couple angles, right? An angle A and an angle B. And then they add those two angles together to make a new angle called A plus B, and we're asked to find the sine of that new angle. What would be the sine of the sum A plus B? All right, so as I did with the first video, I'm gonna draw a picture of angle A, a picture of angle B, and then we'll use those to help us find, along with the sine of a sum formula, uh, to help us find the sine of the sum of angles A and B. So first, the information about angle A. Right. Now we are told that the cosine of angle A is positive 4 fifths. And we're told that angle A ends in quadrant 1. All right, so I'll draw a picture of that. Yeah. Starting from the positive x-axis, here's an angle that ends in quadrant 1. I pick a point on the terminal side, and we'll figure out the x and y coordinate of that point in a second, you know, using this fraction and all that. Draw a perpendicular segment to the x-axis, the horizontal axis, that creates a right triangle. And A, the, the, the angle I've already drawn here is, is already acute, so I don't need to put in the reference angle. So I'm just going to set this up so the cosine of A is 4 fifths. So I'm going to have adjacent B4, the adjacent length to angle A B4 units long, and the hypotenuse R equal 5. So the x coordinate's 4, right? Hypotenuse is 5. And then I'm hoping you could see that the other, the y coordinate would be 3. All right, set up a, a Pythagorean, you could use the Pythagorean theorem to find that, and you know, it should be a positive y coordinate because I'm in quadrant 1. All right, so there's all the information I need for angle A, right? Found all the lengths of those sides. And I'm going to do the same thing for angle B. All right, so the information we're given about this other angle called B is that the sine of angle B is positive 24 25ths. And angle B is also in quadrant 1. Hey, how nice. So in standard position, you know, here's an angle that ends in quadrant one, call it B. Point on the terminal side, and we're going to find an X and Y coordinate. Draw a perpendicular segment to the X axis, create a nice right triangle. Now again, the angle I've drawn here, angle B, is already an acute angle, so there's no need to put the reference angle here. And I'm going to set up this right triangle so that the sine of this angle is 24 25ths. Now remember, sine is opposite, so the opposite length is 24. That'd be the y coordinate, right, up and down 24. Hypotenuse, 25. All right, so r equals 25. And then you could easily find x is 7. Right? Again, set up a right triangle. You know, x squared plus 24 squared equals 25 squared. And just make sure x is positive because you're in quadrant 1 here. I'll leave that to you. All right, so I got everything I need now for angle B. Now, what they've done is they say, oh, let's let's take this angle A, take this angle B, and add them together. Make angle A plus B. And then what's the sine of this new angle? All right, so we're looking now to find, we're looking at angle whatever A plus B is, and we're asked to find the sine of this new angle of angle A plus B. Now hopefully you recall the sine of a sum formula. Remember the sine of a sum of two angles can be expressed this way as the sine of the first angle times the cosine of the second angle. So the sine of A times the cosine of B. And then the sine of a sum is still a sum, right? Plus, plus, plus. 
and then just switch the angles, the sine of angle B times the cosine of angle A. And we need to find you know, these four values using the pictures I've drawn. All right. So the first thing I'm finding is what's the sine of angle A? So here's that picture of angle A I drew. Now we know the cosine of angle A is 4 fifths. Hopefully you can easily see that the sine of angle A is positive 3 fifths. Right? It would be y over r or opposite over hypotenuse here. So the sine of A, 3 fifths. Uh, the cosine of angle B. So that's, I go to my angle B picture. Well, they gave me the sine of angle B, but again, from the picture, hopefully you're easy, easy, easy to tell that the cosine of B is 7 25ths, or x over r, adjacent to hypotenuse, whatever. So it's positive 7 25ths. So cosine of angle B, 7 25ths. Plus, now the sine of angle B. Right, so again, looking at that B picture, well, they gave that to us. They said the sine of angle B is, you know, 24 25ths times the cosine of angle A. So I go to my angle A picture, and again, they gave that to us. The cosine of angle A is positive 4 fifths. And then we'll simplify this. Now this first product, you know, the denominator is 125, right? 5 times 25. The numerator is 3 times 7, that's 21. Plus this second product, again, the denominator is 125 again. Then uh, 4 times 24 is 96. And now I put them together. We're adding fractions. Need a common denominator? Well, they already have a common denominator, so that'll be the denominator of the sum, 125. And then just add the numerators, you know, 21 plus 96, or 96 plus 21, 117. And I think that's probably as simple as that's getting. So, so again, I don't know what measure angle A plus B has, but based on the information they gave me about angle A and angle B separately, I can tell you that when we add A and B together, the sign of their sum will be 117 125ths. All right. And that's what we're asked to enter here as a fraction. 117 over 125. Wonderful. And again, read through the answer explanations, please, especially if you're wrong. All right. Read through the explanations, see if you can figure out where you went wrong. And then next time you see a problem like that, hopefully you'll do better. Okay. So hopefully these couple videos on this objective help you when you're going through these kinds of problems on your own. Thank you very much for watching.